Fit for Success, All Things Are Possible If You Keep Going, by Adrian Turner. Narrated by Lisa Brandt. Part 2. Stress Breakers Burn it up. If you sometimes feel that you are burning the candle at both ends when it comes to your job, or that your candle has just completely burned out, you are not alone. Polls reveal that burned out employees outnumber engaged employees two to one. But you can reignite your energy for less stressful experiences. New research suggests that there are at least three different types of burnout, overload, boredom, and worn out. You may find yourself complaining, feeling as though those in control are limiting you from achieving your goals and ambitions. This is stress overload burnout. On the other hand, burnout that stems from boredom and a lack of personal development is associated with an avoidance coping strategy. These people distance themselves from work and are more cynical. The final type of burnout is simply worn out. This coping strategy is based on giving up in the face of stress. If you are overloaded, bored, or simply worn out, there are a few things you can do. Try emotion regulation. Get control of your emotions and thoughts. Don't react to the stress. Instead, learn to manage those emotions. Another tip is to increase cognitive flexibility. Change what you are thinking about, how you are thinking about it, and even what you think about it. And last, ignite your inner capacity and infuse your life with awareness. Take charge of your life. Do something for yourself that no one else can do for you by consciously and systematically working to defeat the stress, challenges, and demands of everyday life. Don't give away your power and don't give up. Set goals and set your world on fire for greater success. Pain, pain, go away. When times are tough, it's difficult to stay focused on your goals and aspirations. Dealing with painful and challenging circumstances limits your success unless you begin to see your challenges as opportunities for growth. You can experience more peace in these four ways. 1. Use your pain to drive you forward. Pain is an indication that something, somewhere, isn't right. Is your pain the result of unresolved issues? Confront your issues. Don't run from them. The answer can lead to joy if you're willing to address the source of your discomfort. 2. When you change your mindset, you change your outcomes. You've heard the saying, no pain, no gain. Recognize that life's challenges aren't meant to hurt you, but to help you grow. Positive thinking will help you successfully navigate through difficult times. 3. Eliminate toxic habits. Identify behaviors or interactions that are pain triggers. Whether it's a relationship, a specific person, or negative thinking, find ways to limit those situations and remove yourself from settings that stimulate pain and fear. 4. Remember, you have a choice. Decide today that you will not let those experiences own you. When you can manage the present, the future will take care of itself. When the going gets tough. Studies show that 85% of the things we worry about never happen. Yet stress is the most common reason for primary care visits with physicians. Americans spend billions of dollars on stress-related activities. Before you spend another dime or your time in the stress zone, try addressing and assessing to get your blessing. Ask and act. What is the most important thing I can do right now? Sometimes the best thing we can do is nothing. Sometimes the best thing we can do is make a phone call. Focusing on and doing the best thing you can do in the midst of difficult times helps center you. It also increases your confidence in weathering each storm. Ask and act, what can I learn from the experience? Extract a lesson from the stressing. There is a purpose for your pain. When things get hard, that's not always a sign that you're doing something wrong. It's often a sign that you're doing something right. 
you become the person you were meant to be through challenges. Ask and act. What are my choices? Weigh the pros and cons. Creating a list of choices brings clarity to determining the best path forward. Then ask, will this matter five years from now? Looking into the future and thinking about whether or not the difficulty will matter later in life often puts things into perspective. Don't turn a molehill into a mountain and imagine the worst possible outcome to every challenge. Have faith. What you are facing probably isn't as bad as you're imagining it to be. When the going gets tough, start thinking, asking, and taking action to go beyond limitations to achieve success. From overwhelmed to in control. Often when I ask someone how they are doing, they will respond, oh, I'm making it. At times, it can feel like we have way more stress than we can handle. Yet, and still, we find a way to keep going. Making it is for the moment, but after a while, we may end up crashing. To stay in control and achieve more success to meet your objectives, try my six-step approach. Step one, accept the situation. Stop right where you are and accept the situation for what it is. Things will most likely get even worse if you keep going with the same thinking and actions. Stop and identify the reasons behind your downfall. Step two, embrace your failures. This is the only way you'll be able to move on to resolving the situation. Step three, avoid excuses. The last thing you want to do is blame the issue on something or somebody else. Sure, it's easy in stressful situations to refuse accountability, but just accept it for what it is, even if it means coming face to face with your shortcomings. Step four, open up to others. Simply sharing can often help to ease some of the stress. Step five, organize an approach. Now is your chance to change direction and pull yourself out of the rut and prevent the problem from happening again. Step six, surround yourself with positive people. Use the strengths of trustworthy people to get you over the hump. Being in over your head isn't a death sentence and shouldn't deter you from achieving your goals. In fact, it's a perfect opportunity to be creative and begin again. It's your life. You're in control. From worry to winning. Are you a what-if person? Always wondering what might happen if? What if I lose my job? What if they say no? What if I get sick? What if I don't get married? What if the children don't listen? If that is you, you are not alone. About 18% of the U.S. population suffers from anxiety disorders. In the age of information overload, when images of disaster are plastered all over our phones, televisions, and computers, it's no wonder there is so much worry in the world. To further complicate matters, we are immune to the things that should give us the jitters. In reality, we are wired to pay attention to things that are scary, says Dr. Martin Rossman, author of The Worry Solution. The number one function of the brain is to keep us alive, so we worry as a way to anticipate possible dangers and problem-solve our way through them. Unfortunately, we've gotten so good at worrying, we don't always know how to shut it off. But there are ways you can shut down worry and win. One way to do that is to focus only on what you can control. If you can't change it, affect it, or manage it, then why are you worrying? Focus your energy on the things you can change. It's often said that worry is like a rocking chair. You're moving, but you're not going anywhere. Another way is to face the worry head on. Do this by imagining what is the worst thing that could possibly happen. Instead of avoiding the pain, uncertainty, and heartbreak, acknowledge those emotions. When you do, it takes the emotional power away. If you lose your job, you may worry, but you won't die. Many people have survived a job loss, and many have landed in a better position. Always remember, the best of time is the rest of time. Don't let worry get in your way of living a successful life today. Enjoy life. You only get one. Wipe out worry. We don't need Webster, Wikipedia, or a thesaurus to define worry. 
If asked, you'd probably reply that worry is a lack of faith, an anxious feeling, or the fear of failure or something negative happening. There's worry about employment, finances, a spouse, children, and the future. We worry about things we can't even control. I encourage you to stop worrying. Here are a few tips to wipe out worry. 1. Acknowledge your fear or worry. Don't deny it exists. Talk to your worry. Say something aloud like, I'm afraid I could lose my job in this poor economy, but I'm going to give 100% every day. Or, I'm worrying about my children, but they belong to God, and He won't fail. 2. Accept uncertainty. Remember that nothing in life is guaranteed. Worry serves you no good purpose. It is not an action. Hear that again. Worry is not an action. Do whatever you need to do to move on. Call someone for encouragement. Take an exercise class. Scream like a crazy person. Get going. 3. Put it on paper. Sometimes we imagine the worst possible or unreasonable situations. When you write down your feelings, it's a lot easier to see whether they're even rational. 4. Pray. If you've prayed about it, then why are you worrying? Trust and believe that God's will will be done. The truth is, we spend time worrying about things that never happen. Wipe out worry and make room for more creativity, innovation, and success. Just say no. Want more happiness, time, and energy in your days? Learn to say no. Learning to say no can be one of the best things to happen in your life. It was for me. I used to accept all invitations. Why? I didn't want to disappoint the host. I used to take on extra assignments. Why? Because it had to get done. Who else would do it? But I was sick and tired, and everyone else seemed to be galloping through fields of tulips. That's when I took a step back and said no. Every yes adds another thing on your already full plate and takes more energy away from you and your creativity. Just say no if you take on too many commitments, have too many ideas, execute a few, and put the rest in a folder labeled back burner. Suffer from information overload. Start blocking off downtime or focus work time in your schedule. Here's how you can do that. Answer email at set times. Switch off your phone or even leave it behind. The world won't end, I promise. Unless you're my child and I'm calling you. But that's a mommy thing. When you say yes to others, make sure you're not saying no to yourself. Learn to say no without explaining yourself or feeling guilty. No is a full sentence. It's really simple. When you learn to say yes to yourself, you'll be able to say no to others with love. Say yes to more happiness, time, and energy in your life. The world won't end, I promise. Eliminate to elevate. Want to know a secret to gain more time in your busy days? Listen closely. The answer is focus. Isn't it amazing how you are able to get twice as much done on the day before your vacation begins? More than likely you were able to pull it off because you were focused. Focusing our attention on what we should be doing versus what we are bombarded with can be a balancing act. The following are three ways to eliminate distractions. Eliminate doing something halfway. If you are working on a project, writing a report, or planning an event, complete it before moving on to another assignment. Focus and finish. Eliminate restarting. For example, if you started a new exercise program and see another promising better results, don't restart. Keep your current routine. Stopping and starting wastes time. Eliminate unnecessary tasks. Just because you've always done something a certain way doesn't mean it's the most efficient way. Organize and prioritize for better results. Eliminate distractions and you will elevate your success. Switch on. You missed a critical deadline at work. Your child was suspended from school. The car broke down again. These are all examples of situations that could make us lose our minds. If you find yourself in a mental ditch, you need to switch. The switch method will help you stay on course and to keep your cool. S. 
Stop running in circles with your thinking and actions. Be still. W. Wait. Make sure you allocate downtime to engage in activities that stimulate positivity. I. Inhale and breathe. It clears your head and gives you an opportunity to balance the analytical processes of the mind with your emotions. T. Think. Try to understand the root causes and interdependencies of the situation that you are in so you can address the issue. C. Concentrate on your plan. Set clear goals that will get you the results you desire. H. Have at it. Once you are clear about what you need to do, move on and execute. Switch on your creativity. Switch on good thoughts. Switch on to de-stress and experience more success. Hug it out. During one of my coaching seminars to influence better employee engagement, I informed participants of the science behind hugging. Research shows that hugging, and also laughter, is extremely effective at improving and maintaining a healthy lifestyle. Then I encourage participants to hug more. Hug your coworkers, hug your clients, hug your boss. Although they enjoyed the hug in the class session, most felt challenged to apply it in their workplace. I learned this technique from Jack Canfield and had a very similar experience. Three weeks later, I received a note from one of the attendees. In part, it read, I took on your challenge and began hugging more. One particular day, I was in a crappy mood and wasn't feeling well when a coworker stopped by to ask me if I was giving out hugs. And although I was feeling despondent, I decided to make it a hugs day. Not only did it brighten their day, it improved mine, and my headache actually disappeared. Here's what I learned about hugging and shared with the group. Hugging is healthy. It helps the immune system, cures depression, reduces stress, and induces sleep. It's invigorating, rejuvenating, and has no unpleasant side effects. It's nothing less than a miracle drug. Hugging is all natural. It's organic, naturally sweet, has no artificial ingredients, environmentally friendly, and is 100% wholesome. Hugging is the ideal gift, great for any occasion, fun to give and receive, shows you care, comes with its own wrapping paper, and, of course, is fully returnable. So when in doubt, hug it out. De-stress to be your best. Deadlines, job insecurity, and dealing with a difficult coworker or supervisor are just a few of the most common sources of stress in the workplace. If you're stressed out at work, you're not alone. In fact, according to the Attitudes in the American Workplace 7 study, 82% of employees report that they feel some stress at work. 42% of workers say that the stress from their jobs affects their personal relationships. 35% of those surveyed believe that workplace stress harms their physical and emotional health. But there is good news. Regardless of the source of stress at your workplace, there are steps that you can take to defeat stress and feel more calm, centered, and in control when you are at work. Mix things up. If you're feeling frustrated with a difficult or time-consuming task, switch gears. Gain a new perspective on an old or complex issue by working on something else for a while. When you change tasks, your mind is forced to think differently, which is often the wellspring to finding creative solutions and renewed energy. In addition to clearing your mind, switching tasks helps your body to lower your heart rate and stress-related hormone levels. Take a mini mental vacation. If you are feeling overwhelmed, tense, and stressed out from situations at work that you can't control, like dealing with angry customer or demanding manager, close your eyes for a few moments and concentrate on your breathing. Clear your mind with slow, deliberate breaths. As you focus on your breathing, loosen your muscles as you inhale, exhale, and repeat positive affirmations to yourself like, I feel calm, centered, and ready to face any challenges. Even if you enjoy your job, work stress can still be a regular occurrence. Act now so you can de-stress and be your best. Don't stress about it. One of the barriers to living successfully is living with stress. 
Some people say, get used to it, or it's part of life. In coaching, we recognize that stress does not have to be part of your life. There are things you can do to reduce the stress so you can be your best. The following are three simple examples. 1. Take time to plan and prioritize. Would you believe a very common source of stress is a to-do list? It's true. At one point in my life, my to-do list became a torture list. It seemed the words were jumping off the paper, taunting and teasing me, you'll never get this done. I know I heard it. I used to write things down that weren't on the list so I could cross them off just to feel like I accomplished something. It's a sad truth. I was a victim of the to-do list. But I can declare that I've overcome. If you face this same challenge, try this. Instead of obsessing about the list, identify one task that would move you closer to your highest goal and do that task first. The rest is a bonus. 2. Assume people have good intentions. Since you can't read minds, you don't really know the why behind the what that people do. I used to think that people were talking about me if they stopped talking when I walked into the room. It would cause me so much anxiety. Then one day a friend said, girl, ain't nobody thinking about you. After several minutes of knee slapping, I realized she was probably right. And I resolved that even if I thought people were talking about me, it's better to assume they had good intentions. 3. Reduce the chatter. To think clearly and mentally regroup, it's important to get in a space with little noise or distraction. Remember daydreaming? Staring out the window, looking at the sky, and smiling? That was a way of purifying your thoughts. Spend a few minutes each day thinking nothing but good thoughts. Remember, stressing won't lead you any quicker to a better life. Continue to practice ways to improve your habits and thoughts for greater success. Why worry? It's often reported that 85% of the things we worry about never happen. The earliest source related to that reality is said to be Thomas S. Kepler, a respected biblical scholar. Kepler wrote about a woman who realized fears were ruining her life. She began to keep track of what was worrying her, and she found 40% of the things she worried about were things that would never happen. 30% of the things she worried about already happened, water under the bridge. 12% of the things she worried about were others' opinions. And when she thought about it, she realized that criticisms are often made by those who are jealous or insecure, and therefore unjust criticism is a disguised compliment. 10% of the things she worried about were needless health worries, which made her health worse as she worried. 8% of the things she worried about were legitimate, since life has some real problems to meet. If you consider those statistics, it would seem that only 8% of the things that we worry about are worth the worry. That's proof enough to stop worrying about what could go wrong and get excited about what could go right. Life is like a camera. Focus on what's important, capture the good times, develop from the negatives, and if things don't work out, take another shot. Too blessed to be stressed. Stress kills. There have been numerous studies that link stress to cancer, heart attacks, high blood pressure, and depression. But a study by Harvard University shines a new light on the effects of stress. Researchers have proven that it is not the stress that kills, but the belief that stress kills that is the real culprit. In fact, they deducted that more people die from the belief that stress was harmful to their health than those who died from skin cancer, HIV, and homicide. Now that's a wow revelation. This means that how you think about stress matters. If you change your mind about stress, you can change your body's response to stress. Think about it this way. When you're stressed, your heart rate goes up and blood vessels constrict. Instead of thinking of it as a harmful experience, think of the reaction as your body helping you to rise to the occasion. Studies show that people who viewed stress that way stayed relaxed, and their heart muscles looked the same as when they experienced moments of joy. Who knew you could be blessed by stress? During times when you feel overwhelmed, Say these things to keep stress in its place. Stress is my friend. Stress is harmful only if I believe it is.
I'm too blessed to be stressed. Then let go of the stress and focus your energy on things you can impact for better results. Time to make a change. The mini storage business is flourishing due to the excess in our lives. We are overburdened and overwhelmed with too much clutter, too many papers, worn out clothes, or broken and unneeded items. When you clear out the old, you can make room for the new. If your clothes closet is so full that you struggle to find something to wear every day, you've got an excess mess. If there is anything new you want in your life, you've got to make room for it, psychologically and physically. Make a commitment to dump, complete, or delegate things so you can move on and bring new activity, abundance, relationships, and excitement into your life. Here's a simple plan to make a change today. One, make a list. Two, choose three items to work on. Three, set a date to get it done. Four, get started. What's on your list? Promises not kept, acknowledged, or renegotiated? Closets overflowing with clothes that don't fit, are out of fashion, or worn out? Junk drawers full of useless items? People you need to forgive? Do something today that your future will thank you for, because tomorrow is too late, yesterday is over, and now is exactly the right moment to start. Don't drag excess into another day. You can do it, believe it, and achieve it. Stress Immunity You might think that boosting your immune system is all about taking vitamin pills and watching your blood pressure. The truth is, Protecting yourself from illness depends on your mind as much as your body. In fact, there's a growing field of science called psychoneuroimmunology that's devoted to how your personality and mood affect your immune system. Here are the facts. Chronic stress may be responsible for as much as 90% of all doctor visits in the U.S., according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. When stress hormones like cortisol remain present for too long, they can cause disruptions that lead to premature aging, heart conditions, and other issues. So what can you do? Slow down. Take a deep breath when you find yourself rushing around. Stretch out and release the tension. Trim your to-do list. Look for items that you can scratch off your agenda. Maybe do laundry only once a week. Rest and relax. Go to bed and rise at the same time each day. Set a sleeping routine. And when you need a break, listen to your body. Take a walk, meditate, or pray. Recognizing the mind-body connection may help you catch fewer colds and lower your risk for more serious illnesses. So the next time you feel stressed, instead of continuing to plow through, digging a deeper stress hole won't do. Take the time to clear your mind and reset your thoughts to better manage your stress so you can be your best. The truth is, worrying doesn't change the outcomes, but less worry can help you live a longer and healthier life. PMS On an early morning drive, I noticed a police officer had pulled a car over to the side of the road, and like a true rubbernecker as I was passing, I looked to see who was in the car. I saw a female driver staring ahead while three young children were reaching over the seats trying to hit one another. She looked exhausted. I thought, wow, she's got to be stressed. I began thinking about how her morning must have been. Getting up early to fix breakfast before waking the children, screaming up the stairs for them to hurry, climbing back up the stairs because they're wrestling instead of getting dressed, one can't find a shoe, now she's on a hunt, finally she's chasing the kids out the door, loading them in the car, then, oops, one forgot the lunch bag, wait, that's my story. I would assume that is also the story of many others. We are constantly juggling home, family, work, and friendships, which can at times be stressful. During a professional women's association meeting, Star Jones, the former host of the television program The View and president of the organization, presented a message of encouragement. After having open heart surgery, she discussed how she was forced to make changes in her life. Managing stress was one of the things she had to do better. Her system of managing stress is called PMS, but it's not what you were probably thinking. 
P stands for physical strength. Adapt a wellness regime that includes healthy nourishment, exercise, and regular physician visits. M is for mental health. Do what makes you happy. Star loves to cook, and she listens to messages and songs of inspiration. S is for support system. Surround yourself with people you love and those who care for your well-being. Managing stress is all about taking charge of your thoughts, emotions, health, and the way you deal with problems. Find your own version of PMS to live a healthier, happier, successful life. Face the facts. The fact is, everyone is seeking happiness in life. If you want more happiness, the following are the facts. F. Forgive others. It's often said that forgiveness is the gift you give to yourself. The people you are holding hostage in your mind don't even know they're in prison. The only person in captivity is you. Free yourself by letting go of the thoughts that are holding you back. A. Accept your mistakes. We all make mistakes. If you're not making mistakes, you're not trying hard enough. Keep growing and keep going. C. Cry. Big girls and boys do cry. When you cry, the body moves from a state of high arousal or stress to one more associated with relaxation. Breathing and heart rate slows, sweating decreases, and you're more relaxed after you've cried. So cry it out and move on. T. Thank God for everything. Thank Him for waking you, breaking you, making you, and keeping you. Gratitude is a powerful generator of happiness. S. Smile always. Smiling has been shown to increase productivity while performing tasks. There's real truth to the whistle-while-you-work mentality. When you're able to accomplish more, you feel better. Find joy in the fact that you were created from excellence for excellence. Be still. Contrary to popular belief, being productive does not always mean doing more. In fact, one vital aspect that many people forget is that we also need stillness. Every day we get caught up in a whirlwind of choices and activities. What to have for breakfast, watch TV, or listen to the radio. What shoes to wear. Oh, that's a female thing. What happens is that our brains fill up. We get distracted. And even if we don't, life has a habit of, well, happening. So we must make time to clear our minds so we can see what is most important. We see what we can let go of, what to delegate, what we need to change, what we can say no to and what we need to say yes to. Stillness allows us to adapt our plans and actions to the reality of what actually happens in our lives. How can you pause and find stillness? It's easy and takes just a couple minutes. First, stop rushing from one thing to the next. Take the opportunity to pause between your tasks and appointments. Pause during breaks in your day, before you start work, at lunch, and at the end of the workday. Just pause for no good reason. And don't fill every spare minute with Facebook, email, or by starting the next task. Instead, sit still and breathe. Stare out the window. Let the dust settle and wait for your mind to clear. Jean Blomquist wrote, Wisdom means listening to the still, small voice. The whisper that can be easily lost in the whirlwind of busyness, expectations, and conventions of the world. And Donnie McClurkin reminds us of what to do when we've done all we can. Just stand. Become more productive by being still. It can change your life.